1995, can you believe that was 25 years ago? I, I cannot believe it was that long ago. <laughs> it, it's also hard to believe that it took so long for the first African-American person to actually go yeah. to space. Yeah. Such an honor then and still such an honor today because that's something that you will take with you forever. Yeah, the significance is it had been 30 years from the day that I uh, did my spacewalk that we did the first spacewalk ever in the United States. And you were truly inspired by that. That's where it all kind oh, of yeah. began for you, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, when I was 13 years old, uh, watching Neil and Buzz Aldrin land on the moon, that was my inspiration. I, I went running to my mom and I said, Mom, I know what I want to do in life. She was a teacher always asking me, what do you want to do? And I said, I know what I want to do. I want to be an astronaut. And she said, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> but told me that I could be and do anything that I wanted to be and, you know, that's all I needed to hear. You know, Dr. Harris, this is so great because if you, the, the saying goes, if you can see it, you can achieve it. Yeah. And I think that's probably the drive, right, that your entire career, because as a young boy, you were completely enthralled with science fair projects. And I know as a parent to two young boys, sometimes when I hear those two words, science fair, I think, oh gosh, what do we have in front of us? But this is really, it allowed you to let your, your imagination and transform you into space, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So at 13, middle school, and a couple of years later, I joined the rocket club where I got a chance to build my own rocket. We actually built a flying saucer. You're talking about being inspired. Right. That, that's all I needed. And then I had a, a teacher uh, in, in addition to my mother, who inspired me to do whatever I wanted to do and to uh, show me what life would be like as a scientist. What is your message now to, to other kids out there? Because obviously we're going to chat about the STEM education component, but there are so many young people who grow up with the same dreams mm -hmm. you had as a young boy. Yeah, I, I say uh, do whatever it is that you want to do in life and match that up with your skills. I learned very early that I love science and I love space science even more. So I was naturally you know, would gravitate to you know, becoming an astronaut. And so that's the, that's the first step, is figuring out what are your skills and what are the things that you do well. I firmly believe that we are born with certain skills and talents and we use our brains to learn others and to enhance those things that we come in this life with. And if you match your head what you want to do with your heart, it makes a difference. It does. You truly love it every single day and, and, and breathe it in. Besides being the first African American to walk into space, that uh, mission was piloted by the first female pilot, Eileen Collins. And to have the two of you during that time, what was that like for you? That was, uh, that was pretty neat. Yeah. Uh, in the middle of the mission, after we had accomplished our spacewalk, we actually got a call from President Clinton, who congratulated her on being the first woman to go into space or, or to uh, pilot a uh, spacecraft, and me for walking in space. We also had a guy by the name of Michael Fold, who was the first British citizen to go into space. And so we have a lot of firsts on that. In addition, our mission was went to the Mir space station, to the Russian space station, and that began this whole international effort. That is really so fantastic. cool. It's so cool. And I love some of the, the pictures that we've been popping on the screen. You were born in Temple, Texas. Houston is home now. And one of the things that's really important uh, for you in your initiatives is to reach minority communities in Houston. Talk to us about that. Yeah, it, it really uh, comes from my early beginning right here in Houston. Even though I was born in Temple, that's a whole nother story. We actually were living in Houston at the time in a place called the West Side, which we now call the Heights. You right. Know, and that's <laughs> the place to be. But back in, in the day, back in the old days, it was a very poor uh, neighborhood and not a lot of kids made it out of that neighborhood. And so I saw that and of course having this educator as a mother that said that education was not only the way out but the way up uh, I took that to heart and that's the same message that I like to deliver to kids and I I, I say I, I like to tell you uh, when I'm talking to kids about what I all the things that I've done not to brag about what I have done but to show that even a poor kid from Houston Texas can go into space 
It's so remarkable. And if you think about it now, I mean, the Heights area, Oak Forest, Garden Oaks, that yeah. whole section uh, is booming with a STEM program. And uh, the teachers and the students and the parents know how important this is to the future of science, to the future of our children. And I think that that's so great that we have you to stand for that because one can't exist without the other. I mean, it, we have to have it. And it's so great that you're instilling uh, the future and understanding that science and technology, engineering, math needs to be part of our curriculum on a daily basis. Because it's a part of our life. Yeah. In everything that we do, even the studio is filled with all sorts of technology. And, and that's the point that I like to uh, show young people is to connect the dots with what they are learning in school with real life. And when you do that, they get it. Right. You see that aha moment uh, come in their minds and you kind of go, oh, yeah, that makes sense. We've also seen so many industries change, Doctor, at, at rapid, rapid speeds. And a lot of studies show that half the jobs of tomorrow don't even exist today, right? Mm -hmm. And that is a critical piece of helping ensure that these young people have STEM literacy, mm -hmm. right? Yep. It's about teaching the basics that allow them to be prepared for the jobs of the future. And that means not teaching for the test, right? That right. Is, and we can get in that debate and all sort of thing. But it's, it's teaching skills in these fields uh, or the skills that are required for the fields of not only the future but the now so that those young people will use those skills to become the new innovators, the new inventors of the new technologies that, that have yet to uh, appear. And what can we do at home? But what can we do at home to ensure that the STEM and, and sort of that fire continues? Yeah, make sure that your schools have some type of program that uh, emphasizes math and science education. Uh, thank God this country is, is uh, waking up to the notion that we need that uh, because we're not just competing with each other, we're competing with the rest of the world. And if we are not prepared, we're gonna lose out and we can't have that happen. And, and then it is, it's encouraging uh, your kids and helping them think past today. Mm -hmm. You know, we all were kids at one point in time, right? <laughs> yes. And I, you know, I was in school, and the next thing, my next thought was, uh, what happens at the end of school? I'm going to go and play. Right. Get the snack. So it's more than that. <laughs> <laughs> it's more than that, right? It's more about you know asking them to look further than today. Uh, one of the things I like to do when I go into, especially elementary schools, is as I ask them, I ask, raise your hand and tell me how many of you know what you want to do when you grow up. And that exercise is simply to get them to start thinking about what they want to do. Right. And just that uh, incentive sometimes is just is enough. Well, Dr. Bernard A. Harris, Jr., thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you for your time and also everything you're doing out in the community to prepare our young people for tomorrow. Thank you for having me. Come back and see us anytime. Will do. And in the meantime, if you'd like more information about Dr. Harris and the National Math and Science Initiative, you can visit the Scene on Houston Life section of our website. And we'll be right back. I love you.